Hi everyone, this is Dan Gross for News 8 and RochesterFirst.com. Welcome to What's Good, the place where we share the good news in and around Rochester over the past seven, or in this case, 14 days. Let's cue the jam. Starting off week one of our doubleheader, summer is officially back in Monroe County. That, of course, following an announcement Friday of Ontario Beach's public swimming hours. And, of course, that's last Friday. We're still getting back in the swing of things. Despite struggles earlier in the summer to source lifeguards, Ontario Beach Park will be staffed every day through Labor Day, each day, 11 a.m. through 7 p.m. Paul Conroe, at East High School, a physics and chemistry teacher, secured a commitment from several local company leaders, as well as half a million dollars in education funding to build a precision optics lab at East High, the only one of its kind in Rochester. It's an opportunity for Rochester City School District students to have access to something that they didn't have prior to 2010 to learn more about this growing field, and of course, to get a head start. A movie filmed and set entirely in the Flower City debuted at the Little Theater on East Avenue. The movie's called Tahara. It's a coming-of-age comedy, and it follows inseparable best friends Carrie Laustein and Hannah Rosen as they navigate the suicide of their Hebrew school classmate, Samantha Goldstein. It was written by Rochesterian Jess Zeidman and was shot in 2019 at Temple Bethel on Winton Road. The whole movie was completed in 2020, but only hit theaters this past month. The movie currently has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes from 28 critics. 15 volunteers from the World Mission Society Church of God joined the city of Rochester to clean up around the Susan B. Anthony neighborhood. The cleanup was meant to restore, maintain, and beautify the historic area. The participants of the cleanup were presented with a certificate of appreciation by community leader Charles Reeves. At the start of his senior year, Austin Sierra of the Gananda School District was hospitalized after a motorcycle, after his motorcycle collided with a truck while he was out riding. But after months of being confined to a wheelchair and incredibly hard rehab, he managed to walk across his graduation stage. For Austin's classmates looking on, the graduation was more special, knowing that they could go through it all together, while Austin gives credit to his family and his support system. 75 rats and mice were rehomed last week at a mouse and rat adoption event in Lollipop Farm. The event was called It's a Small World After All and features crafts for kids, demonstrations on how to care for small animals, and more. And each animal was examined to make sure all of their ailments were properly cared for. And the Rochester International Jazz Festival returned from this past week. While there might have been some minor hiccups because of flight issues or other illnesses, most shows went off without a hitch. The free headliners at Parcel 5 helped the festival to draw record attendance, and according to them, that meant over 200,000 people attended the festival. And on the heels of that, international and award-winning actor Kevin Bacon visited the House of Guitars. Yes, that means uh, Bacon was at the hog. You can hear, <laughs> you can see him here posing with this fantastic axe, and this was around the same time that he performed with the Bacon Brothers at the Jazz Festival. And two local students are putting their talents on display in New York City. Aiden Eddy from Greece Odyssey and Lexi Lopez of Eastridge are representing Rochester at this year's Jimmy Awards. The students were, won the local stars of tomorrow competition through the Rochester Broadway Theater League. It's the first time in nearly three years that the Jimmy Awards will be held in person. A ninth grade student from Churchville Chilai Senior High School will compete in the U.S. Youth Weightlifting Championships in Las Vegas. This is 15-year-old Trevor Whedon. He's a contender to place in the top three in his weight class. This all according to his coach, Paul Dick. 2012 Olympic gold medalist Jen Sir has announced her retirement from professional track and field. She won her first national title in 2015 and had an incredible 17-year career that is regarded as one of the most accomplished in pole vault history. On to another Olympian, Maddie Schaunt. In the New York State Special Olympic Games, she won gold in all of her gymnastics events that she competed in. And at the USA Games in Orlando, she took home gold in the beam, along with two silvers and another bronze. City Blue Imaging is finally getting a new home after a fire destroyed their facility on Christmas Eve two years ago. Now they're just a few doors down from their original location. This new facility features upgraded murals as well as bigger facilities. 
and Darnell Wilson, the incredible man who helped save the life of Van Stanley at People's Choice Kitchen, was awarded with a Carnegie Award. This is given to someone who took life-saving actions to help another. Wilson stepped in without thinking during an attempted robbery at the People's Choice Kitchen. And now, three years after that, he's getting even more recognition for his actions. Wilson, incredible stuff. And a local student is being recognized for his efforts in the Rochester City School District, school district and the community. 18-year-old Isaiah Santiago has received the New York State Commendation Award for his ongoing work addressing violence as well as mental health needs in the community. He's doing this all through his initiative, We Got This, which he started at age 16. The Gates Central School District drew the curtains off of two new all-electric school buses this past week. According to officials, Gates Child Aid became the first district in upstate New York to electrify uh -huh, its bus fleet. The two new buses will begin to be in service in September. What else is good? Dunking with authority is good. Check out this fantastic video of Officer Tamaris Bell turning back the clock at Coach Iglesias' primetime basketball camp. In full uniform, he stuffs the net with room to spare. Officer Bell, those are some nice hops. What else is good? Family legacy is good. We are so happy to finally have Natalie Kutchko be officially part of the News 8 family. Of course, being the daughter of John Kutchko, she grew up in this building, and now she works for us, still telling great stories in our community, as well as, of course, anchoring the newscast with her dad. Now to end on some bittersweet news, and I wanna make sure that I get it right, so I'm going to the paper. Today, as we're recording this, was Mark Ruba's last day at News 8. Uh, in all honesty, I've been trying not to think about this one because I'll be losing a friend at work, and I'll also be losing a sitcom brainstorming partner as well as an inside joke cultivator. But perhaps more importantly, News 8 will be losing a rock, a guiding light, and a beacon of professionalism as well as a standard bearer for journalistic integrity. Mark, we will all miss you, but we wish you nothing but luck and happiness in the next part of your journey. Much love, man, we'll be in talk soon. What else is good? Your good news. Whatever it is, if it puts a smile on your face, the team and I would love to hear from you. You can drop me a line personally. It should be on screen right about whew. Now, that's dgross at wrctv.com. And please pass along any photos or video you might have as well. This is a visual business, so it helps us to tell the story. Well, I think that's it for this week's What's good? My name is Dan Gross. Thank you so much for your time and company today. Really appreciate it. You know what else is going to be good? The rest of your week. We'll see you in two weeks. We've got another double header. Take care.